Good afternoon, cadets. Welcome to a very cloudy and quite cool Orlando. We are parked at gate 43 at Orlando International Airport and are about to continue on our round the world trip with this leg of the journey taking us across America. Our route through the US is going to look something like this, with us exiting the continent through Canada and finally Alaska. Today we are flying to the jazz capital of New Orleans in the state of Louisiana. New Orleans. The flight covers a distance of 478 nautical miles and is expected to take about an hour and 23 minutes from wheels up to touchdown. Our aircraft, crew and passengers are all Disneyed out and we are eager to get underway. Here we are in the cockpit of our 737-600. We'll go batteries on and then we'll go emergency lights guard. Okay, the batteries uh, that then go down the stairs. Let's turn those off. Down the stairs and we're going to go to uh, ground services and we're going to request the ground power. Okay, ground power has been setting up, it's been set up, there it is over there. And we see ground power is available, we can click that on and he's on ground power, so we are good there. We can go windows heat on and probe heat. Okay. Um, and we'll go further upstairs. We're going to go to the nav switches. We're going to ask the inertial navigation system to uh, calibrate itself. Okay, from there, let's go down to our ooh, uh, FMC and we are going to program our flight. Okay, the uh, pause in it, in it, yep. We're going to go to the next page, copy those coordinates on the uh, previous page and drop it in there. Okay. The route. Our origin is a KMCO, Orlando International Airport. KMSCO, we drop that in there. Our destination, KMSY. KMS. Why? Let's have a gander at Little Nav Map. Right, here we are sitting at Orlando International. Oh, we're going to be flying across the Gulf of Mexico over the BP um, oil derricks and such. And there is our destination Armstrong New Orleans International KMSY. That's Armstrong is the airport's named after Louis Armstrong, uh, the jazz player. Okay, and that is our route on Little Nav Map. KMSY, we'll drop that into the destination there. Runway. So, let's figure out which runway we're going to use. We are going to open the ATC. Are we going to tune? Okay, so seeing as there are multiple runways, what we're going to do is tune ground and get our clearance. We're going to be departing to the west. The west. Orlando Ground Commander 532 with Echo Request Taxi for takeoff west departure. Commander 532, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 36 right using taxiway Bravo 7 Charlie Bravo 9 or Bravo Bravo 10. Right. Contact tower on one two four decimal tree when ready. Thanks, Bob. So they've given us a thirty six right. Right. So that's they've taken into account where we're parked, and that's our runway right there. So that shall be a quick and easy taxi. And look at that wind direction. That's why they've given us thirty six. We want to take off into the wind. We've got a six knot wind on a heading of seven degrees. Okay, so uh, then we're going to go 
30 30 6 and right Commander 53 to please acknowledge Oh There we go Taxi 2 and hold short runway tree 6 right using taxiway Bravo 7 Charlie Bravo 9 or Bravo Bravo 10 Commander 53 This will leave blank that will leave blank KMSY There we go and we can activate that and execute it at the same time. Initial reference. Okay. It's been a while. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. It's the zero fuel weight. There it is. Zero fuel weight. We'll put it in there. And that's good. Reserves. We're just going to say five. And cost index. We're going to just put 50. Altitude today. We're going to be flying at 320. Flight level 320. Uh, course and winds we're not going to worry about. We're going to execute that. Okay, M1 limit we ignore. Take off. We're going to take off on 5 degrees flap, which we'll put in there. Then we got 128, 129, or 137. We have the Orlando Ground UPS 817 requesting pushback. A default load UPS of passengers. Pushback. Request accepted and half a tank of fuel which will be enough to get us there uh, the CG let's click that in there will be 23.7 and our trim 5.57 now let's not forget to do this this time uh, whoopsie daisy my mouse has gone haywire there we go there we go 5.57 I think that's five and a half. That looks like five and a half to me. Or maybe one, two, three, four more rotates. There we go. Okay, going back down to the FMC, we are pretty much done with these calculations. We've got the uh, legs in, which at the moment is just one. On the descend, we'll worry about uh, how we're coming into the airport. If we have a look at... Armstrong International, Armstrong New Orleans International, we will be expecting runway 11, if I'm judging, go according to the local weather, but uh, we'll worry about that on the descent. Alright, so that's the FMC done, from here, Orlando Ground, UPS 817, with Echo ready to taxi IFR. Uh, it's a loud radio. Tower on one one eight decimal four five when ready. We can prepare this aircraft for engine start and pushback. Flight directors are on. Uh, if we have a look over here, let's just turn Taxi our. We barely five, use this heading, but I like to program it just in case. Just going in the general direction of our intended flight, which is, if you look down here, just disappearing off the screen there. Once we have done that, our indicated airspeed will be, uh, let's say, 240, Orlando up to 10,000. Altitude, 32,000. Now you'll hear the other aircraft requesting uh, pushback because they're using the uh, default pushback system whereas I'm using PMDG's built-in version if that makes any sense okay altitude uh, we're looking good auto throttle can go on so long barrow pressure will set B it's just done Right, we're going to go upstairs. Now, your damper can go on. Seat belts, everyone is on board. We can put those on. Cabin pressure, we're going to put that to 32,000. Ah, that was nice and quick for a change. Right, our fuel pump on. We're going to fire up the APU. One, a two.
Orlando ground of Morningstar 7203, requesting the end of pushback. <laughs> Morningstar. Morningstar 7203, request to end pushback received. That's the name of my local airfield. Right. That's what we're looking for, the EGT there, just pulled up. Once that settles at around Orlando four, four and a half. With echo ready to taxi IFR. We can uh, tell the airplane to go on to Morning APU power. And we are waiting for this light here to come on. Contact tower on one, two, four decimal tree when light ready. is on. We are now on APU and we can go to APU Gen. Ground power, we can turn off. Taxi two and hold short it's not really necessary to turn it off here because you're going to un they're going to unplug it anyways. But there we are. Okay. Back down to the FMC. Right, let's go right out and go to FS Actions and Ground Services. We are now going to release the ground power and we're going to take the trucks off. What that's going to do is retract the jetway. Okay, everyone is standing clear. The jetway should be disconnecting any second. Doors should be closed. The jetway should be disconnecting any second. Any second. Ah, something's happened there. Ah, right, we are clear of the jetway. Okay, also not forgetting the hydraulics pumps, we need to turn that on and we're going to turn APU bleed on, we're also going to turn all of the fuel pumps on. Right, I'd say we're ready. We're going to go to return, we're going to go to pushback. Okay, the pushback. Let's have a look. Whoopsie daisy, we want to have a look where we are parked. We are parked at gate 43. And we want to reverse. This is a bit tricky there. So I'm going to right click there, measure distance from there, and we're going to reverse. Let's say I'm going to say 300 feet. 300 feet, and we want our nose to the right, tail to the left. Putting that back. Not straight out, we want to turn those right. That's what we wanted. We want to select tug. I don't see what the point of having that as a choice. And it's got 295, but I'm just gonna make it 300. The distance to the taxi line. All right, and let's start. Okay. The moment we start moving, I'm going to start these engines. What we need to do, what we have forgotten to do, is turn the anti-collision lights on and we're going to turn the taxi lights on. Okay. Brakes are released, can confirm. Here we go. Okay, we are moving backwards. Let's get these engines started. Uh, we'll be using the left igniters today. Our engine 2 onto guard. The navigation lights on, we can see that. And the strobe, the beacon. They call it the rotating beacon. You have to... The R needs to roll off your tongue. The rotating beacon. Right. This engine is ready to go. And, uh... 
waiting for the fuel flow to come up there it goes now a lot of other sim pilots wait for this engine to click I'm a little more impatient I can get the other one started so long I mean it's caught what do you need to wait for it's like the coals on a on a barbecue the coals have caught why wait get the other engine started right and introduce the fuel right Parking brake is set. Brake set. It was finicky aircraft. Okay, off he goes. The tug has disappeared. Right, both engines on. Both engines stable. Stable ish. I'm going to start lowering the flap to five degrees. One, two, and five. TKS will stay off for the time being. And I think we can slowly begin our taxi. Let's just have a look at how they've positioned us. Okay, so we're just going to do a right turn straight down to a taxiway Bravo and then we're going to turn left to get to the end of runway 36 right for takeoff. Lovely. Okay, and let's hold the brakes and introduce some throttle. That's the parking brake that's just clicked off and release the brakes and let's begin that taxi and we're on our way great that before. No pushback tug is available for your request. That is a new one. Okay, slowly making our way to our runway 36 right. It is uh, 13 degrees today in uh, Orlando. Orlando ground southwest 233 with echo ready to taxi IFR. And it looks to me like we're going to go into some cloud. Southwest 233 taxi to and hold short. 
York of Runway Tree, six left, using taxiway Alpha Bravo one zero. And I do believe we on might way, get some rain. Okay, we're almost there. Alright, here it is. We're going to have to come to a stop. Stop. Uh, let's go to tower. And we are good to go. Orlando Tower Commander 5 Tree 2 ready for departure to the west at runway Tree 6 right. Thanks, Bob. Cleared for takeoff runway tree six right, Commander five tree two. Okay. Landing lights can go on. And TCAS can go on. I don't think I have forgotten anything. Uh, I have. One, two. Ah, 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 that was close. Nice. Oh, and we need to go to Gen 1 on that. Okay, let's see where we're going. A close call. If I had not remembered that, the cabin would not have pressurized. No! Okay, we're at the runway. Oh, one last check upstairs. I'm just a little concerned that we have a light on here. We shouldn't. Let's turn that on to auto. APO, APU bleed can go off. There we go. Now we're looking good. No red lights anyway. I'm taking too long on this runway. Let's get going. We're at five degrees. And rotate it 130. Air speed's alive. Got some sun coming through the uh, clouds. Rotate. Gear up. There we go. Goodbye, Orlando. Whoops. Okay, let's just acknowledge that also. Orlando Tower Commander 5 Tree 2 frequency change. Okay, let's throttle back a little bit. We don't need to be going full beans, as it were and start raising those flaps. There we go. Lovely. Settling, settling on course. We're going at 180. Auto throttle, let's arm the autopilot. The auto throttle should kick in. And we can go to LNAV. That should kick in. We can also go to altitude hold. We want a vertical speed at 1.8. 
Right, the autopilot is now in control. And we're going into the cloud. Some uh, ominous looking clouds. So we're at 240 and this overspeed bar here tells me that the flaps aren't up all the way. Let's do that. We were on flaps 2 and now we're on flaps 1. Let's take it the rest of the way to flaps up. Once we've done that, we'll see this red line will disappear. There we go. That doesn't mean we can go faster than 250, we're still under 10,000 feet. And we're in the States now, the FAA will come and uh, give us a chat to, a good old talking to. Okay, climbing at 1,800 feet per minute on our way to 32,000, we're currently at uh, 7,300. Everything looks under control. Let's have another peek upstairs. This all looks great. Landing lights will keep on until we reach 10,000. Which is going to be pretty soon. Okay, got some blue sky. So. Landing lights, I think I'm going to turn off now. We're like eight and a half thousand. Oh, we are all a good. Oh, one thing we have forgotten to do is switch the plane to Jen. And what that's done is disconnected the autopilot. Turn it back on, please. Frontier flight one four contact ground on one two six decimal four. Okay, so what that was, when we started the engines, we didn't tell the plane to go on to engine power instead of APU. But now we have done that, and that switchover Going has turned off the autopilot. But don't panic. The autopilot is now back on and everything is back under control. Good. Everything's fine here. We can go to menu. We can go to legs. There we go. Counting down to KMSY. We are now going to go to our cruise. Do enjoy the scenery with me.
Okay, welcome back. Time to descend. We are 117 nautical miles out. 160 nautical miles out. And we are quickly just going to adjust altitude all the way down to, seeing as uh, New Orleans is on sea level, I'm comfy to go down to, all the way down to about 4,000 feet. And let's start that descent. And we'll descend at 18, 18, 1,800 feet per minute. Whether we need to go more or less, we shall ascertain that as we get closer. With that, we're also going to decrease the speed, the mark, and there you can hear the engines throttling back. We've also got a uh, light on the fuel, the master warning, so what we'll do is we'll go upstairs. As before, one of the uh, center tanks has run out, but what we'll do is we'll have a look down here. That's on 0 0.1, that, that's going to go down to zero like any minute, so I'm just going to turn the center tanks off. Okay, then that warning should be gone. Okay. Simpsons clouds, I like to call these. Right, everything seems under control. Now, have a look at a little nav map. I'm going to do what I did previously uh, with regards to contacting the tower. Armstrong, New Orleans, uh, KMSY. The tower is 119.5. So let's just dial in the radio stack to 119.5 and see if we can get a runway for landing. Have yeah, we'll a look down here, and it's going to be... one one nine point five. That's a fair amount of dialing we need to be doing here. 119.5. And then we're going to uh, swap it to the active. Right, now, if we're in range, I'm going to open the ATC window and see if we have... No. 119.5. COM1 not in use, so it means we're too far away. What we can do, while we're doing this descent, and this is also assuming that this Frequency in middle nav map is correct. But when we get to about, mm, if you have a look down here, we're still 98 nautical miles out. Once we get to 50 and we don't have anything up here, then uh, it'll be the wrong frequency. Then we'll have to find the correct frequency. But, going back to little nav map, as I said earlier, we are expecting to land a runway 11. So, I'm going to plan for that so long. So, I'm going to have a look at... I'm having a look at these waypoints. I'm going to take this one here. And this is... Royal. So... R-O-Y-U-L Then we're going to look at this one here and this is FS-35 and I don't like the sounds of FS-35 what about this one here I-R-A-L I-R-A-L I-R-A-L-E and then this one here, which is mud bug, I'm going to say. Mud bug. 
Right, so we're going to see if we can program these into the FMC and let's see if it accepts them. And we're going to keep an eye on that. But uh, otherwise, the plane is still very much in autopilot. Have a quick peek out the window. Okay. So we're going to go to legs. Now, first one is going to be Royal. R O Y U L. Let's see if this works. R O Y U and L. Now we're going to put that in here. It has accepted it. Then we're going to try I rail. I R A M L and E. Royal is 84. Okay. Put that in there. That works. And then the last one, Mudbug. And Mudbug will be the waypoint that lines us up with the runway. Okay. It seems happy with it. We're going to take now KMSY and put it into the missing spit. That all looks good. And that's the modified route. We're going to execute this. And now it says actual route. Now the aircraft should be turning. A slight turn, but a turn nonetheless. There we go. Going into some haze, I see. Right. Are we in contact yet or in range? Not yet. We are now 78 nautical miles out. Actually, we're 78, 77 from the first waypoint. So we don't want to tune uh, Houston Center. I'm actually just going to have a peek at the airport list. And we're still going to be quite far from it. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to go back. Still says not in use. What I'll also do is go down to the radio stack and just switch. One, two. So, almost to reset it. Okay, so passing through 18,000 feet, there is land. Now what we're going to do is have a look at our descent rate. We need to see that our descent rate is adequate. So I'm going to just zoom out on here. There's the green banana and you can see that there is our destination. And the green banana is here so we're... Oof, we started descending quite early and our, our descent rate is too steep. We want to have it so now we're only descending to the thousand feet. Now look how that green banana flies out. Okay, I think that's a, now. Remember, this is descending down to five thousand. I want to begin our final approach at two and a half thousand. So that green banana, I'm actually going to go at one thousand one hundred. Now that looks a bit better. That's looking nicer. Okay, let's have a quick peek at little nav map. There's our course deviation there. 
and this is swampy area, yeah. And this here is the Mississippi. Mississippi River. We'll be flying over that. Shall we have a look, see if we have... There we go, we've got range. It says New Orleans. Okay, let's rather flip the frequency off and on again. Hmm. It's not giving us the options. Well, let's tune uh, Houston Center. We don't want flight following. But now we've just... Okay, I see what we've... Houston Center, Garanade 7716 is at flight level 305. Climbing yeah, so we're going to have to reprogram this again it's to 119. Let's just do it again. Bear with me. We don't want to contact Houston, and we don't want them to know we're here. 119.5, and do the swap. Okay, well we've tuned into them, maybe we're still too far out to contact. We do have 54. We're going to have to do a bit of a scramble if they don't tell us to land on uh, runway 11. Once we have confirmation of which runway it is, then we'll start setting up the ILS approach. the nearest airports list see if I can see them because it does say that we are programmed we are tuned into them it's not KNBG Why? There it is there. Well, there we go. And the frequency was correct. New Orleans Tower Commander 532 is 4 or 5 miles east, 12,000 feet with Mike to land. Commander 532, New Orleans Tower. Altimeter 30 decimal 24, wind 076 at 7. Make left down wind runway 11. Okay, runway 11. Lovely. That's what we wanted. Thanks, Bob. Enter left traffic runway 11, Commander 532. Okay. From here, okay. That is going to be our flight path. Whoop, 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 and then like that. Whoop, 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 with complete with those sound effects. Let's get that zoomed in a little bit more. I'm very comfy with where my green banana is. We're also going to lower that altitude to 4,000. Also, this. This is problematic. We are about to pass through 10,000. And we are going at above 250. Not good. We need to slow the aircraft down. And we might as well go landing lights on now. Okay, look at that scene. It 
Louisiana. And there it is, passing through 10,000. We're at 260, slowing down very slowly, but uh, I think that's good enough. Got some cloud ahead. Okay. Little nav map. We need to pay attention to runway 11. Runway 11's actual magnetic heading is a 107 magnetic. So, let's tune 107 or dial 107 to the course. One zero seven. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. Whoopsie daisies. One zero seven. What we need to do next is find out the frequency for the ILS approach. And it's a one zero nine point nine. Because we may need to do a blind approach by the looks of it. Okay, going down here, we're going to go to the nav and we're going to look for 109.9. Done. And we're also going to key that on the other side 109.9. Both are active. Okay, we've got the makings of a good approach. We are now going into cloud, but we still have a visual on the ground. It's quite thin, it seems. Okay, we are... Green bananas there, she's still descending. 4,000, uh, we are just below 250. I think we're all good. It's gonna take us a little while to uh, approach. Okay, then now there's not much left to do, but uh, wait. If we have a look at the... There's the Mississippi, and then it comes around this corner here, and it should be right in front of us, and there it is. Our first look at the Mississippi River. Complete with the Huckleberry Finn. Okay, I can hear the engine start to idle up a little bit. I think it might be a little turbulent. Now, directly ahead of it, that is Lake Salvador. Over there, Lake Salvador. And that over here is Lake Katuchi, something like that. I've murdered it, but there we go. We should see the airport. There should be, in fact, we should be going over another airport right now. Yes, there it is. That is another airport that's called New Orleans, the KNBG. 
one of New Orleans two airports we of course are going to the bigger one Someone's flying to San Francisco. The airfield that we're heading to should be just over here somewhere. We've now reached 4,000 feet. I'm happy to continue the descent. Take us to... 3,000. Also, I need to check, having a look at the last transmission. Uh, where is it? Ultimate is 3,024. Let's check that we've got that. We've got 3,026. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard. Which is the fast, easy way to. Uh, there we go, now it's 2 5. Okay, now you can see on our display we're getting Southwest close to the Royal. Royal. Um, uh, waypoint, where we'll do our first right turn. I'm happy with the speed at the moment. Mm, actually, maybe let's just slow down a touch. Let's slow down a touch more to 220. curious, this plane bank angle is always too much, so if I adjust the bank angle, will that adjust this? Might, might not. Okay, we're at 3000, we've only got another 500 feet to descend, which I'm not going to do yet. I will descend the final 500 feet after the IRL or waypoint. Okay, it's actually getting quite dark in the cockpit. We might need to turn on some interior lights. There we go. Oh, that's too much. Ah, these knobs. I cannot stand how sensitive these knobs are. There we go. And the top one. There we go, just a touch. Not too much. Because we're underneath some very dark and heavy clouds. Okay, we should be getting our right turn. There it goes. That was the first right turn. Two more right turns, and the uh, last one will be lining us up for the runway. So for now, we just enjoy the ride in. If you're curious about the flight after this one, our next destination. Spirit Wings Tree for seven contact New Orleans departure on one two five decimal five. Is going to be in the middle of New Mexico, and yes, you guessed it, we're going to Roswell. The lake directly ahead of us is Lake Loch des Alamans. Yeah, 
Beautiful. This is reminding me of uh, our approach into Havana. That was three, two, three flights ago. Aside from jazz, New Orleans, seafood, gum, uh, what is that uh, seafood dish that they are uh, famous for? Gu uh, gum, gum something. Gumbo. Crab's legs. I think we've had quite nice weather on this flight. And, as a reminder, we are on live weather. So the conditions that we are seeing out these windows are the exact same conditions, supposedly, that New Orleans is experiencing right now in real life. Right, that's quite the turn, this is quite the turn this aircraft needs to do, but she's handling it beautifully. After this turn, the next turn will be the one to line us up with the runway and that will be the final turn. Between here and there, I'm going to lose that last 500 feet and then uh, the approach will take over there. The approach of the autopilot. There's the Mississippi again. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little more. In addition, we're going to start introducing some flap. That's one degree flap. Let's take us down to 200. Actually, make it 190. Right, now things are going to start happening quickly. And we're going to have to have our game faces on. We are going to go to approach. That's what we want to see there. Let's lose that last 500 feet. And we need to do that quite quickly. We want more flap. Let's take it down to altitude of 2200. Let's take our speed down further to 170. And more flap. And from here, I'm happy to lower the wheels. 2500. Lower the landing gear. I can see the airport. There it is there. Yep, definitely time to lower the landing gear. Right, there is the last turn lining us up for the runway. We're going to go to command on the other end. Okay, not yet. Approach armed.
and we need to arm these boilers. Slow us down. Slow us down to one uh, one fifty. Okay, something's not right here, so I'm going to cancel. There we go. The approach was not happy, so we'll just bring this one in manually. We are nicely lined up, lined up with the runway, and we are ignoring the uh, tower. Clear to land runway 11, Commander 532. Let's check what we are full flap almost. We have our clearance to land and we are at the right speed. We are very high though, we need to lose a fair amount of height. So let's lower this nose. Wheels are down. I've got three greens. Spoilers are on. I'm looking for my glide slope. Any minute now, I think the uh, robotic voice is going to start warning me about my glide slope. That was naughty of me to allow that to happen. Coming in to New Orleans. Air speed looks good. I got three whites and one red. Now I've got two whites and one red, so we're looking good. Hold on to your socks. 40, 30, 20, 10. The first thrust. Down to 70. Thereafter, we can go on brakes. Do I need to say it? Welcome Command to... Two exit runway when able. Interrupted me. Welcome to New Orleans. Let's not worry about that. Exit runway when able. I'm going to turn to the right here because that is where the terminal buildings are. And I shall do that. One two one decimal niner, Commander five three two. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. That's a new one. Okay. Tune Orlando, not Atus. Ground. Uh, taxi. It doesn't look they're giving me. Look like they're giving me the options to. Park, which means, like the last airport, we're going to have to go find our own parking. Ground services? Huh. That's the second airport in the US now that uh, refuses to give me a parking space. Either or, very well. So, I will have to pick one when we see one. So, the main turn is here. I think I'm going to head for 12. 12 is, for me, my default gate. So, let's head to 12. But, 
before we continue further, I am going to a start the APU up. And we need to go a landing lights off. And while keeping an eye on the runway and where we're going, uh, turn TCAS off. The uh, spoilers are probably up still. We can uh, bring those down. And uh, the flaps can go back up. Clean the aircraft up. Let's verify the flaps are on their way up. Yes. They are. Okay. Now. APU is still spooling up. Let's have another look. Okay. Yes, we continue for a bit more. APU is on, I'm going to go on to APU. Then we can tell the aircraft you are now on APU. That means we can uh, happily turn off the engines without turning off the Wi-Fi. Pretty much going to be our next right we need to take. Isn't it silly that they don't have anything for parking? But we're using this until we get beyond ATC. Can't wait for that. Right, we're going to be turning right here. And I believe gate 12 is... already got a plane in it. Well, that sucks. Then we'll take this... Uh, uh, I see one right at the end there. We'll take that one. And this spirit aircraft does not park very well. Coming through. Southwest Spirit and American and Delta. We'll squeeze in right at the end in the corner there. If they'll have us. going to put my parking brake on whoopsie daisies finicky parking brake and I can go engine one and two off and then I'm going to go to menu are they going to allow uh, ground services we can put the trucks request the jetway it's actually working Okay. I thoroughly enjoyed that flight. Thank you for watching, everyone. And I will see you on the next one, where we are headed to Roswell.